So I'm assuming you've watched my calculating your your uh, BMR video. So I'm going to go into a little bit of just high level detail of how to build a bodybuilding diet. Uh, keep in mind, this is just a real basic diet. Uh, just an example of how you build out your own diet to achieve your own goals. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need a, ch a coach to to put a diet together. Uh, coaches can be good to hold you accountable. I personally use a coach just because you know, when you're in a contest prep, you just don't think straight. A lot of times you don't think straight uh, or objectively about yourself. It's very difficult to be objective about yourself, so a coach is helpful in that aspect. But some people are disciplined enough uh to, to be objective about themselves and can do it on their own. And if you want to do it on your own, this is just kind of a basic high-level view of how to build your own bodybuilding diet. Okay, so let, let's let's take a look further. So um, I've already did a video on this, but I'm just going to give you a high-level look at establishing your what your ba base metabolic rate is. Um, I have a formula that I use. There are other formulas out there where I calculate your base metabolic rate on a, a formula that uh, considers your body fat percentage, your lean body mass, your body weight, and your activity level to come up with a uh, to come up with a base metabolic rate. And this is an example of kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, let's just say I'm, you know, I'm somewhere around 250 pounds. I really have no idea what my body fat is. I'm just going to guess somewhere in the 10 to 12% range um, after coming, rebounding from the show. Um, and, you know, this gives me a base metabolic rate without activity of 2,640 calories per day. Um, I can tell you if I eat 2,640 calories a day, I'd be losing shit tons of weight. So obviously there's more calories burned somewhere else, which is in the activity. Um, and I use a formula for that, which is the lean body mass by an activity intensity factor times the hours of activity per day um, that I am engaged in. And this gives me a total metabolic rate of 3,267, which is pretty close to what my break even is. I can tell you, well, if I get below 3,200, I start losing weight. It's just the way it is with me. Uh, it may even be a little bit higher. Um, it may be around 3,500, I start losing weight. But watch the full how to calculate a, your BMR video if you want all the details on it. So once we have that established, we can start building our diet. Um, so first things first, we need to, after we do that, we need to calculate our macros. Um, protein, studies have shown that really all you need to recover from working out is 0 0.8, 0 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Bodybuilders have this obsession with eating too much protein. Um, <laughs> you, you really... You're, you're, if you're going to gain 20 pounds of muscle a, a year, you're only synthesizing about 25 grams of protein per day. So you don't need to eat 400 grams of protein. It's more important to have consistent protein throughout the day. Um, but so, you know, studies have shown that 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight is ample to fuel uh, it, to, to recover from workouts. And let's just say that you're enhanced you're training super hard and we want to be safe. There is more pro protein metabolism when you're enhanced. Um, so we can take that up to one to one and a quarter grams of protein. Um, and remember protein uh, is used primarily as, uh, as for tissue repair. We want to build our diet so that the protein is prioritized um, for tissue repair. And secondarily, it can be used as fuel through a process called gluconeogenesis. If your carbs and fats are low enough, your body will start prioritizing protein um, for fuel and converting that into blood sugar. Um, fats. Uh, your fats, you know, somewhere between 0 to 0 0.3 pounds per body weight. Um, you do need some fats in your diet uh, to, f uh, fuel, uh, to, to be used in various chemical processes, uh, such as absorption of fat-soluble proteins, manufacturing of hormones, etc., um, and your body, your body will burn fat secondarily as fuel as well. You don't need as much fat as you think, and your fats should come from essential fatty acids. 
Um, you know, you need really just minimal amounts of fats. Americans vastly overeat fats. We eat way too many fats. Um, it's part of it is just fats taste good. There's this recent obsession with keto diets that somehow people think fats are healthier than carbs, which is not true. They're just a tool in your tool belt. Um, so really, you know, you, you can get, you know, for a short periods of time for a day or two, you can get away with almost zero fat, but you want somewhere in the 0.3 grams per pound of body weight in essential fats, uh, to maintain health. Carbs, typically whatever calories are left over after you, you calculate out those macros you put into the carb column. Uh, carbs are only used as fuel. There are no essential carbs. Your body has to have protein. There are essential amino acids. You will eventually die if you don't eat. Your body will just eat itself. Same thing with fats. You'll eventually die because your body can't absorb the nutrients it needs and complete chemical processes and manufacture hormones. Um, uh, so you will eventually die if you do not eat fats. You will not die if you don't eat carbs. But keep this in mind, carbs are the body's preferred fuel source for weight lifting. So if you want to optimize, and this is what we're doing here, this is this this diet is to optimize performance in bodybuilding or strength training and fats are the preferred fuel source for strength training okay so so we we carbs carbs we want carbs carbs are the preferred fuel source okay keep that in mind um so an example of a base diet we established like for me uh my base metabolic rate is 30 3267 um my weight's 250 pounds uh, this works out to be, if, we're, if I'm consuming uh, 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight, 313 grams of protein per day. If I'm going to eat six meals a day, we'll just break it down into nice even numbers and say I need 50 grams of protein per meal. Okay. Fat. Uh, I'm going with 0.2. Um, so that's 50 grams of fat per day. I don't count the fats uh, in my my nutritionist doesn't count the fats that we get out of lean meats if you're going to eat fattier meats you should um and your carb sources shouldn't have any fats in them so um we're going to go with 50 grams of added fats of essential fatty acids okay um sorry i'm going to seize <coughs> excuse me um all right, so, and then, like I said, whatever's left over, we go to carbs. That leaves us 450 grams of carbs. Now, keep in mind, fat is, fat is 9 calories per gram. Protein and carbs are 4 calories per gram. So, fats pack a lot of punch in the, in the diet. Um, adjusting the diet for goals. Okay, so once we, that, that's just the break-even point, okay? Um, you know, that, that's the diet that we need for us for me not to gain or lose weight just to stay in neutral which is usually not what you want to do in bodybuilding you're in bodybuilding you're either in muscle gain mode or fat loss mode okay so if you're in fat loss mode you're going to need to create a deficit so thermogen thermodynamics rule here uh you know calories in calories out we have to create a caloric deficit to burn and lose fat. Now this can be done in multiple ways. Uh, we can just cut calories from the diet. That's the most direct way to do it. You can also do more exercise. You can do cardio. You can do you take things that raise your your um, metabolism, such as fat burners. You can use hormones to enhance your metabolism. Um, increase um, your your non-exercise. Um, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis, uh, you know, so just moving around the house, not, you know, walking to work, shit like that. Um, and keep in mind that 3,500 calories uh, um, is one pound of fat. So you have to burn 3,500 calories from somewhere to lose one pound of fat. So this would give us, if we wanted, had a goal of losing one pound of fat per week, we'd need a 500 calorie deficit. Uh, typically, I would start with a 10 to 15 percent reduction um, in the calories. So uh, let's say to start off with a diet, we want for our fat loss diet. For me, we would make a roughly a 300 calorie cut, um, and then make up. You know, say if I wanted to lose 
uh, a pound of fat per week, uh, we would make up the rest of it from, from uh, you know, cardio or fat burners or something like that. Um, if I'm looking for hypertrophy, weight gain, unfortunately, there's this, you know, people think there's this, there, you can gain bukus of muscle by being isocaloric. It just doesn't work that way. You might be able to put a little bit on if you're using drugs, but not much. If you want to optimize, and this is what this, that's what bodybuilding is about, is optimizing performance, you're going to have to be in a caloric surplus to gain muscle. Now, you want to walk the line of gaining too much fat and gaining muscle. You are going to gain some fat if you're going to gain muscle. That is just the trade-off that you have, but you want to minimize that, uh, the amount of fat that you do gain when you're gaining muscle. So, same thing in this direction, too. Smart, start with small increases, so probably a 10% increase if you're looking to gain muscle. So, maybe just 300 calories, uh, you know, and see where that, see how that works out. Okay, usually we add calories in the form of, of carbs. Typically, carbs are what we push up. Uh, if you want to maintain, we just leave the calories in neutral. But I, I, for bodybuilding, unless you're on cruise or just taking a break for a little while, I don't see any point in being isocaloric that much. You're either in fat gain mode or fat loss mode. Uh, maybe if you're taking a break for a few weeks and letting your body heal up, you want to be isocaloric. But I, to me, people, people keep weeble wobbling and going back and forth between both. You know, there is a time to cut fat. There is a time to put on size and I, you know, commit to one or commit to the other. Don't, don't waffle back and forth. You're going to get better results. Like I said, this is about optimization. Um, playing with your macros. Now, here's the thing you can do. Uh, if you want to optimize body composition, you can manipulate your macros to do so. Okay, you can consume the same amount of calories and you can adjust, adjust your carbs, fats, protein. It, protein usually stays static, but, uh, you know, so for example, with carb cycling, which is what I do on the high carb day, we pull protein down um, uh, because carbohydrates a high carbohydrate state where your high insulin levels, you are, um, that is a muscle protective state. So, you know, uh, you don't need a ton of protein. Um, you can cut the protein back and put more calories into carbohydrates. Um, if you really want to optimize fat burning, you can cut carbs pretty low. Uh, you can go low carb. Um, you know, you can go down to zero carb if you really want to optimize fat burning. Um, if you're in a fat burning state, not optimal for muscle gain, but optimal for, for fat burning. That's why you have to choose which state you want to be in. Um, you know, and with the carb cycling diet, which is what I'm using currently, you're rotating the carbs up and down and adjusting calories uh, that way as well. Um, you know, for hypertrophy, you do have to meet the minimum protein uh, requirements, um, uh, you don't want to go below that 0 0.75, 0 0.8 grams per pound of body weight, probably 0 0.1 or 1, 1 gram is, is ideal. Um, other macros can be adjusted and played with uh, to optimize body composition. Uh, so your food choices, proteins. For bodybuilders, I hate to break it to you, vegans and vegetarians, you, you just, you can... I don't, I got to be careful here because I know people get pissy about this, but you can do bodybuilding if you are a vegan or vegetarian, but it is not optimal. This is about optimization. The optimal protein for building muscle is animal protein. Animal protein is the only protein source that has all the amino acids in a complete chain necessary for building muscle. With, with a vegetarian diet, you have to mix and match, uh, protein sources you know we also want to keep these these protein sources low in fat uh you know so you don't want to be eating ribeyes all day long right? you're going to have so much fat in your diet then the majority of your calories are going to come from fat remember fat is nine calories per gram and it doesn't take much fat to eat up all of your your calories um I, if I recall correctly, I think a tablespoon of fucking peanut butter has something like 12 grams of fat in it. And, and, um, 
you know, that that's like a cup cup of rice almost. You know, so a cup of rice is way more filling than a than a tablespoon of peanut butter. Um, you know, f- fats are are the fats that we you know. So, oh, I'm sorry, going back to the proteins. Low fat proteins would be 96% lean ground beef. I use that. It's hard to find uh, for whatever reason. Fucking Walmart has it of all places, and it's actually pretty good. Um, chicken breast. You you want the chicken breast without the rib meat if you can. If if they have the rib meat on it, just cut it off, fillet it yourself. Uh, white fish, egg whites. Um, I pretty much stay away from pork processed meats. You don't want garbage processed meats, um, sausages, bullshit like that. Uh, protein powders you can use sparingly. The problem with protein powders is whey protein is in and out of your system so quickly. Um, that it it's you know you you'd have to eat it every hour um to maintain a positive nitrogen balance um it also fucks your stomach up i just like even if you get like the pure whey isolate it's i like i can only tolerate limited amounts of it or otherwise i'm farting and shit in my pants uh real protein just for me the my body tolerates chicken breast cod and lean ground beef the best I, that's pretty much all i eat fats you want you want your fats not to be the saturated variety uh, keep those you're, you're going to get enough of that from your you need very minimal amounts of saturated fats and you're going to get what you need from the meats that you eat so your added fats should be from efas only nuts nut butter nut oils olive oil avocados fish oil things like that that your body needs for essential processes and to keep you healthy also help with your lipids keep your lipids in check uh carbs uh for fat loss and for mass gain are two different things for fat loss um you know i my carb sources i want stuff that's going to keep me feeling full okay because if you feel full you're less likely to cheat and fuck up on your diet so things like brown rice whole grain rice oats uh, potatoes are pretty filling sometimes you know i could use those on both ends whether i'm um, you know, things that are more filling um, are better on on the uh, fat loss. For hypertrophy, you're going to be trying to jam down a shit ton of food. Uh, I like white rice. I don't use pasta. Gluten fucks me up. But if you can tolerate pasta, fine. You can have some of that. Uh, fruits, fruit juices, uh, potatoes. Potatoes are pretty filling though too, but most of my carbs, if I'm trying to optimize digestion and put size on, I use white rice, cream of rice. That's pretty much it for me. Um, vegetables, uh, stick with fibrous vegetables, not 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 starchy vegetables. Um, for hypertrophy, you may want to cut the vegetables down or just cut them out completely. You might not be able to get down all the food you need to get down. Now remember, this is not about health. Yeah, I know that people are going to scream at me. Well, that's not healthy not to eat vegetables. Yeah, no, I know, I know. There's nothing really <laughs> bodybuilding that's that fucking healthy, okay? It's healthier than sitting on your ass and drinking beer and smoking cigarettes and eating pizza all day long. But, you know, we're talking about sport performance, not optimizing longevity. If we were optimizing longevity, we wouldn't be eating 500 grams of carbs every day and six meals and... Uh, we probably would be eating a very low calorie diet. Uh, for hy- hypertrophy, I stick with the things that make digestion easiest. If I'm burping, farting, getting heartburn, you know, get diarrhea, get constipated, whatever, I know something's fucked up with my diet and I need to change things up. I found just the basics sticking with easy to digest white rice, chicken breast cod i eat to be i'll be very honest with you when i am in a hypertrophy phase i eat very little vegetables because they fuck my digestion up um and make my stomach upset um especially if i'm trying to jam down six meals with a crap ton of rice it just it just slows the digestion down it makes me feel miserable um i'll use a greens powder or something like that so i get what i need but I don't eat a lot of uh, vegetables when I'm in a hypertrophy phase. When I'm dieting, I eat tons of vegetables. Um, I do eat some fruits. I like fruit when I'm 
when I'm in a hypertrophy phase, I don't eat a ton of it, but I'll have, you know, apples, oranges, grapes, things like that. Um, okay. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to do more of these videos. Uh, if you have um, anything you want me to make, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to record whatever you want. Please like and subscribe. I, I get to see a ton of people watching my channel, but they're not subscribing. YouTube loves it when you subscribe. Uh, <laughs> they, they, if you don't subscribe, it it doesn't help me out. If you want to help me, if you want me to make more videos, please help me out. Um, and also follow me on Instagram for, you know, just more information. Um, my Instagram handle is Paul K Barnett. Thank you.